Hey everyone, this is Adam with Departed Reality. Today we're going to build the DIY Linear Actuator. So to get to the plans, we'll go to departedreality.com and then we'll select the DIY Linear Actuator product page. You'll download the plans using this hyperlink here. And we'll open up that zip archive when it's done downloading. Alright, the first thing you want to do is open up the PDF of the plans and select which version you're going to be making. So we have two different motor sizes, an ADST and an IDST, and three different travel sizes. So a 600 millimeter travel, 500 and 400. Today we're going to be putting together this version. So with the ADST motor and a 600 millimeter travel. So we're going to go to the parts list that has this part number in the file name. So we'll switch back over to the zip archive and we'll go to the parts list folder and then we'll navigate to the PS600 ADST and open that up in Excel. So what we want to see here is, this, is these major categories, the 3D printed parts up top and then we go to the purchase parts down below. Um, we have item numbers that correspond to the item numbers on the drawing which we'll get into a second and then we have the quantity that you're going to be producing. So for the 3D printed parts um, you'll find these STL file names that will go into your slicer and then you want to print these quantities here. And then we also have recommended print settings and then down below are all the other purchase parts that you'll have to get. Okay, We'll switch back over to the drawing. Um, in our assembly video we're going to be following the steps in this drawing step for step. And one thing I wanted to show you is, is some some tips on reading the drawings. Um, we have these these item number balloons, that's what they're called. Um, so the numbers that are in this circle, this 18 in this case, corresponds to the number on the parts list. Okay, so what that means is if we look on the parts list, I closed it, for number 18, scroll down to 18, item number 18, we can see that that part is an M5 nut. Okay, so 18 in the balloon matches the number on the parts list. The quantity here, this four, so we're going to be using four of these nuts in this step. So we're going to press four of those nuts into this 3D printed part here. Okay, well let's get started with the build. Here we'll start with assembling the ball screw assembly. Um, I have this bracket here where the ball nut sits inside, I've already pressed the four nuts into the plastic part. Um, you can you can pull those those nuts into the plastic part using using a screw or a bar clamp like this. So you can kind of squish the nut in between the plastic part and then then twist it down to 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 squeeze the nut inside there. But I've already assembled this this whole uh, linear actuator once already, so I already have the nuts in place. All right, we're gonna slide this part onto the ball screw, and then the ball nut will slide down into there. And then we have this bracket that holds the O-ring That'll go on the other side. So the side uh, right here with the threads. And then we'll we'll put these flathead screws through all three pieces. So we'll join them all together. So I'm just going to throw them in. Allen wrench to tighten up the screws. I'll get them all just barely tight and then I'll go around and, and, and torque them all down. Okay, 
So the screws are tight. And then we'll take this O-ring, slide it onto this part. And the O-ring just sits onto that top plastic part here. It just stays there. You want to make sure you don't forget to put that one on because um, you if you put the bearing on the end here uh, before you put on that o-ring you won't be able to get the o-ring on okay so in the in the first step you also put on this little cylinder part with the snap ring but if you have an older ball screw like this one is that has already had a, a one of the FK bearings put onto it. Um, you can have these threads that are that are buggered up a little bit. And so I'll show you a trick that I learned from uh, another person online uh, using a power drill uh, to get uh, to get the nut onto these threads. And so we're going to skip putting on those parts until the next step. And now we'll attach the, the fixed support bearing to the end of the ball screw. So the, this bearing came with two different spacers of different lengths. So we want to put on the short length one first. So we'll slide that on to the end of the ball screw. And then the bearing is going to go next. And so we want to have the flange pointing that way. And then at the other side, we'll put the longer bearing. Okay. All right. And now we'll put on the square nut. So there is a, a really short shoulder. We want that pushing up against the spacer that we just installed. So, so the shoulder goes that direction. And so you'll, what you can find is sometimes you can get the thread started, but then you can't get it to go any further. And you don't want to mess with any of the lead, so you don't want to put any um, like vice grips or anything on the lead, or that'll mess up your ball nuts. And so this trick, you can use just a regular cordless drill. and tighten it onto the opposite end. And snug it down. And then you can use your crescent wrench onto that square nut and then slowly spin the lead screw with your drill in a tightening, tightening motion. Close. Still just a little bit of play. Okay, that's the end. All right. Take the drill off the other end. Okay, so. Now you, what you want to do is you want to make sure that there's no play. You can like tug on it, make sure there's it doesn't you don't feel any vibration when you're pulling along the the axis of the screw, um, and then the the bearing should also spin free. All right. Now what we got to do is put in this little set screw. So there's a really tiny set screw that comes with the bearings that that holds that keeps the nut from spinning off. And what you want to do is put a drop of Loctite, so the, the pink or purple Loctite, the low strength, and you'll put it onto the threads of the set screw before tightening it in. Oh, that was a little much. Okay, and we'll 
gonna snug it down. So now we can go back to that step of putting on this little plastic part. So we we'll want to slide it on to the end here of the ball screw. You want to make sure that you push it down all the way so that you can see the groove for the snap ring to go in. Now we'll use some snap ring pliers. This is the most unique tool that you should have for this. Okay. So I put the snap ring on the end of the snap ring pliers. You want to be careful here because these snap rings can't fly off. Seat it into that groove. You want to make sure that it's all the way in the groove. Okay. All right. Now we can put our ball screw assembly aside for a minute and we can take our longer extrusion. So this one is the one that's tapped on both ends with an M8 screw. So if you if you have extrusion um, with the 10 millimeter T slots and the bigger holes, you might have to use a threaded insert to get it down to an M8. So some some extrusions, when you tap it, it'll be an M12, and then you put a thread reducer or a helicoil to get it down to an M8. All right, we're going to be attaching these bearing pads. So these are the ones from 8020. These are the UHMW ones that you can get. And these are made specifically for the eight millimeter slots. In the plans, there's also this 3D printable version that you can make out of the IGIS iGlide, or IGIS, maybe it's pronounced that way. Um, and then there's also a version of this um, for the, the 10 millimeter slots. So if you do have the, the 10 millimeter slot extrusions, you'll want to print out the, the bearing pad out of the IGIS material. So in this case, I'm going to use the, the 8020 bearing pads. So we'll slide them in the end of the extrusion. And you line them up with the end. Tighten, tighten the screws down. The placement of these aren't real critical. over and the other two to the other side so all four are going to be on the same end opposite end of the extrusion. We'll put on this bracket. This is the bracket that goes on the top of the extrusion. It has a pocket on the bottom uh, to hold this jam nut. 
it should be a slip fit so you can just let set the, the jam nut down in there and then you'll use the flathead screws to hold that bracket down Now we'll put that ball screw assembly inside of the extrusion. So we have these two M8 button head screws. So we'll slide it in to the end. We'll put these screws in. down. Okay. All right. All right, now we'll attach this lower bracket to the fixed bearing on the ball screw. So the this plastic part has a bunch of nuts that are already pressed into it. So on this side we have this little uh, this little cutout, the square cutout, we want that to be facing that way. So the the flange of the of the fixed bearing will sit into this. Okay. Then we'll take our our M4 socket head cap screws to attach the fixed bearing to the bracket. So I won't tighten these down all the way. I'll just get them close. And then I'll go through after they're all in and do the final tightening. Now we'll snug them down. So now we'll have our two shorter pieces of extrusion. These ones are tapped on one side. They're tapped over here on the left side, not tapped on the right. We'll take four of these bearing pads and they're gonna go on the untapped side. Next, we'll combine all three of these pieces. Okay. okay. So we'll take our four M8 button head cap screws. thread them into the end of the extrusion. Just 
tighten them very loosely initially. So you don't want those bearing pads um, pressing too tightly on the center. So you don't want to be pressing down on this or anything like that. Uh, it should just be kind of loose sitting there. I'm going to tighten them all now. And you should be able to spin the end of the of the ball screw and it'll slide the the center section. Okay. And I'll attach these brackets on the top here. So we can pre-assemble some of this stuff. So we'll take these double nuts and then loosely screw them to the, the brackets. So you can see the beveled edge here. That's the side that the heads of the screws go on. And then when you put these screws into the double nut, you want these the little protrusions that come out here. You want that pointing away from the screw. Okay. The same thing to the other part. So we have the, the T-nuts, the screws attached to the both of the brackets, and then we'll slide it into the two outer pieces of extrusion. We'll make it flush with the top of the outer piece of extrusion. And then when we tighten these down, you want to make sure that there's no play. Don't squeeze it very tight, or it'll be putting a lot of force onto those bearings and they might squeak. So. Just snug it together and then tighten the screws down. I'm going to lightly tighten this side and I'm going to flip it over, put on the other bracket, and we'll come back to do a final tighten. I'll tighten the screws a little too much on this one. So I'll flush the bracket to the top of the outer piece of extrusion. I'm going to just very lightly tighten these ones. I want to make sure that the extrusions are together. Not in, and I'll do a final tighten. And we'll go back to the other side. Final tighten these. Now I'll put in the end caps onto the two outer pieces of extrusion. Uh, these are the 3D printed design. They have little plastic crush ribs to keep them held in, but these only work on the extrusions that have um, the whole size around seven millimeters. So if you have a different size, you might have to buy an off the shelf end cap to put in its place. So I'm gonna slide this in the end. And I'll use a, a dead blow hammer and just lightly tap it in. The other side. And that's it. Okay. All right, now we'll assemble the driven pulley. So this will be the pulley that attaches to the ball screw here. So the, the pulley's in, in two pieces and then it, it sandwiches together and squeezes on the, the shaft of the ball screw here. So we have to take these two nuts and then we'll, we'll slide them into, we'll slide one of them into the pulley in this hexagon hole. And then if it if it doesn't just slide in, if you have more of an interference fit, what you can do is you can take the, the screw, that M4 screw, 
maybe it's an M5. And you can use the screw to pull the pull the nut in. And you might have to use a pair of pliers to hold the nut as it goes into the hole. There it goes. So once it gets started, you're fine. And we'll take the, the clamp and do the same thing. There's another hex hole that this other nut will go into. And again, I'll just pull it in with the screw. Now we can preassemble the the clamp and the and the pulley. So there's you want to have the on the clamp. There's a bevel that'll match the bevel on the on the pulley here. So one of the socket head cap screws goes on both sides. When you're pre-assembling the pulley, you want to make sure that the clamp doesn't clamp down tightly to the pulley. So you want to make sure there's a gap in here. That way you can slide it onto the shaft of the ball screw. If you clamp it tight, you might have to disassemble this part again to, to get the slide on. So you want to make sure there's a little gap between those two parts. And notice on the end of the pulley, there's a, a square cutout. The, the square nut on the end of the ball screw slides into this cutout here. So you want to make sure that those are, are aligned. And then you can see here, so there should be a, a very small gap maybe half a millimeter gap between the end of the pulley and the surface of the bracket here. But you want to make sure that when you tighten it down, it's not rubbing so you can spin it free freely. All right, and I'll tighten this down now. I found it works best to do maybe half a turn on one screw and then rotate the pulley kind of tighten it down a little bit, go back to the other one, snug it down. Okay, that's done. And we'll double check to make sure that there's no rubbing. Okay, we're good. All right, now we'll attach the drive pulley to the motor. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is insert the nut into the hex cutout on the inside of the, of the pulley here. So this could be a little challenging. So we can use the same trick that we used on the other pulley is we can take just an M5 screw and slide it in there and use the screw then to pull the nut into the that hex cutout. Hopefully it's not too blurry. Different wrench. So I'm going to tighten this screw to pull that hex nut into the cutout. And I'll take the screw out. And 
So the nut should clear now the, the key on the motor shaft. And we'll take our, our set screw and we'll thread it into that nut now. You want to make sure that you don't push too hard on the nut, otherwise it can slide out of that cutout. So now the set screw's in there, threaded into the nut just loosely, and now we'll be able to thread it onto the motor. So we'll just slide it on for now, we'll leave it loose, and then we'll, we'll align, we'll kind of adjust the positioning of the pulley onto the motor shaft a little later when we have the timing belt on there. So we can just leave it loose. And now we'll attach the motor to the linear actuator and we'll put on the timing belt at the same time. So there is some slop here so you can slide the timing belt on while you're putting the the motor on. Then we have these M6 screws that get threaded into the bracket. Go around and do a final tighten on all these screws. And then we'll adjust the the pulley, the drive pulley position on the motor shaft. Okay. okay, let's get a good camera view of this. So what we want to do is make sure that the timing belt is running parallel to this surface. So you can, you might have to adjust pulley, pushing the pulley that way on the shaft, or maybe back this way a little bit to make sure it's aligned right. So I'm going to adjust the pulley a little bit. This is why we left it a little loose. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then what you want to do is then spin spin the pulley until you see the set screw that's pushing on the key. So you can get the set screw where it's pointing this way and then you can take a, a, a right angle Allen key and tighten that set screw. This will keep the, the pulley from sliding around on the motor shaft. All right, now we'll attach the pulley cover, the pulley and timing belt cover. So the first thing we want to do is we'll insert the jam nut into this hex cutout here. It should be a slip fit. And we'll thread another jam nut onto the 20 millimeter rod end. And then we'll thread the rod end into the jam nut that's in here. And so what you want to do is tighten the rod end so that the jam nut and the end of the rod end is flush. You don't want it sticking out proud. If it's too far, if it's too far in this way, what will happen is it will impact the end of the of the ball screw here. So just tighten it till it's flush and then we'll cinch down the, the jam nut on the other side. And we can we can tighten this jam nut now. So a good way to do that is to put a allen key or a screwdriver through the eye of the of the rod end. And then you can use your crescent wrench to tighten this. It's 
doesn't have to be perfect now. You can adjust it later when it's on your rig. Okay. So the end of the rod end is flush to the surface of the of the GM nut there. We'll take these flathead screws and attach the bracket. Again, I'll partially tighten all the screws and then go around and do a full tighten to make sure all the, all the holes are lined up. I don't want to get you know, five out of the six screws in and tightened and then not be able to put in the last screw. So not doing a final tighten kind of helps them all get aligned. And then you can do your final tighten. Switch to the other side. Okay, we'll screw the jam nut onto the rod end and thread the rod end here. far you go in is less critical on this side. So I like to go as so there's maybe 10 millimeters or so of thread showing on on this end. We do the same tightening process. We'll keep the rod end from rotating with the screwdriver or allen wrench and then tighten the jam nut. Now we have the linear actuator fully assembled. I wanted to show you the, the end pivots that we offer at Departed Reality. Uh, comes with these rod ends and they're highly recommended that you use these end pivots. I'll show you why. Um, so there's these misalignment spacers that slide into the rod end that allows the rod end to travel much further. So you get a ton of travel here, where if if you don't have these these spacers and you just say tighten washers up against the inner race of the of the rod end, what can happen is during motion is that you get binding where a, a large like bending torque or a moment as they call it would be applied to this uh, to the rod end, which could end up damaging your actuator. So these end pivots come with the rod end, the misalignment spacer, the sheet metal bracket, and the hardware to attach it to uh, uh, extrude, T-slot extrusion. So I'll show you how to use that real quick. So those misalignment spacers slide into the rod end. And then this eight millimeter bolt goes through the whole thing. And then you put on the nut on the outside. So this bracket would be mounted onto your frame, whether your cockpit or your base frame, and give you plenty of travel.